Beverly. Hi, how you doing, Kim? I'm doing great. How is downtown Burbank doing? Beautiful downtown Burbank, as they say. Burbank is sunny and lovely today, you know. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. What's, what's, pretty what's the temp? Cool. I think the temperature is 80 degrees right now. Oh, hot. Yeah, yeah but that's okay. That's fine. Okay. You know, they, they said, you know, it's going to heat up. You know, I think it's going to be like almost 90 today. Oh, yeah. my goodness. But well, we are in October, so we always get the cool in the evening. So yeah. I'm forward to that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm glad you came on the show. You are just so multi-talented. Thank you. you. Poetry, you write short stories, you're a fabulous photographer. And I kind of wanted to know what led you to all of this? Okay. Um, I used to be a singer. Um, I used to, you know, sing and with, for um, Tana Gardner. I did background singing. And me and my sister was also winners for Talent America a long time ago. I didn't and, know that. Yeah. So <laughs> so you got that on top of all of this. Okay. You yeah. are really multi-talented. So what I was doing when I was a singer, I used to write songs. And um, I, after my mother's death, I was trying to write a song and I couldn't find the melody for it. You know, it was just because I was depressed during that time. Yeah. So what I did was I just left it and I didn't turn try to turn it into a song. I left it as a poem. Over um, time, I submitted that poem to a publication and the very first poem that I wrote got published. So that made me feel... Um, uh, encouraged it yeah. to continue. So I started writing more poems. And of course, you know, uh, in the process, you submit poems, some get um, rejected, but I got a lot that were accepted as well. So I, I just kept going with it. That's how I started. And um, the poem was called Puppy. And, and it was, it's a sad poem. It's okay. a sad poem because it's, it's referring to me as a puppy because I'm born in the dog year. And um, oh. it was it was talking about me being sad at the time, you know. So, yeah. Wow. And so my very first poem got published. So did any of these started. poems turn into songs? Well, I might have songs. Usually when I write songs, I have a different process. Oh. I usually will start out, you know, um, with the title. I do this with my poems as well. Yeah, and, and with my short stories, I usually will start with the title and then that spurs the story. It, in, it inspires me to write what I'm going to write. Yeah. So, yeah, I had songs and, um, uh, oh, my gosh, I've, I've done so many different things. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so can you kind of explain what poetry is? Because I always thought it was just, you know, four lines and they had to rhyme and then another four oh. lines and they had to rhyme. But it's I think it's just so much more than that. Yeah, you know, poetry, this is the thing about me. I fall into everything backwards. I'm not someone who has studied poetry. Um, what I did was I just followed my own inspiration. Like, like I know there's all different forms. Like, I, I do know um, haiku. Um, I do know some other forms, but I don't worry about things being a form. I do rhyme some poems. You can poems can rhyme, but a lot of them don't. They can be prose pieces. They can be long, um, or they can be short. They're, and also, I I love the fact that every art form is evolving. It's changing from what it used to be. So there's I'm always encouraging people to come up with something new. You know, don't worry about all of the forms that are out there. Try to come up with something new. You're a person like everyone who has ever created a form. You know what I mean? I know as people, we always are looking for guidelines like a, yes. a box to give us to say, this is the thing and this is how you do it. Okay. But you have to realize that there was a time when someone was coming up with those forms. They were just being creative. You know, right. Okay. So we have to keep being creative instead of saying, okay, you got to do this like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So a poem, is it a short story or is it? Oh, it can, it can have story elements in it. Now I'm, I'm not someone who studies form a lot. So a poem can be something it's usually 30. This, this is how I go. It's usually 32 lines. It can have stanzas. OK, uh, and of course, it can be longer, you know, it can rhyme or not rhyme, you know what I mean? So it's just you um, sharing 
a thought of what you want to express using um, interesting language, you know. So yeah, it's it's not something to me. It's not something that you have to do like in a box. Like it's got to be this. Yeah. And it's got to be exact. And and you can look at the poems that are out there, and then follow what you see there. You know, as far as some tell a story, some are funny, some are not. You know, some are are sad. People um, sharing a, a, a lot of poems are sad. You know, mines are yes. not always sad. Mine are funny. I talk about everything under the sun. I'm somebody who's doesn't follow form at all. You wow. know, and yeah. so and they're they're very descriptive, kind of like you're painting a picture, mm-hmm. like painting you're a picture painting. in your mind, and that's kind yes. of what how it's different from just a short story that you're writing. And it can be an, an emotional picture. It it can. Um, it can be any kind of way, it, you know, it's whenever someone asks me to say, put it in a box and say what it is, it's, it's <laughs> you expressing yourself. And it's usually coming from some inspiration on the inside of you and using creative language to show it, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. And then yeah. you do readings, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did now, that come about? Well, once I did my poetry and then I had done quite a few different poet- poets, um, poetry and also got them published in different places, there's readings everywhere. There's readings in, in different bookstores and it's very easy. You can look them up online, you know, and what I do is you can be what they call open mic where you show up and you sign up and you read. And that's how I started, you know. They there did was, a lot of that in the 60s, right? Where people... Oh, they, but they still do it now. It's, yeah. it's never stopped. It's all, it's everywhere. It's um, in every city. If you just Google, you will find poetry readings. You, if Facebook often has them, if you look at, if you look them up, you can find them on Facebook. Wow. But um, we have a Barnes and Noble here in Burbank. And I started going there, you know, years ago. They had um, Friday night poetry at the last Friday of the month. And it was hosted by a man named James Levin. And so I would, you know, go there and read. But even prior to that, after I became published, um, you know, one thing always leads to another. Once I put out my first book, people were inviting me to come and read at their venue. And, you know, I was doing a feature. A feature is like a block of time where you share your poetry, you know, during that block of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. How how many have you done? Oh, my God. I've lost count. It's because I've been doing this for, um, I started like seriously in 2007, I would say, because my first book came out in 2006. But prior to that, I wasn't doing many readings. I was just writing and submitting and becoming published. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been doing it so, since 2007. Yeah. And when you first started, did you just show up or do you have to let them know in advance that you're going to? Well, be- if it's an open mic, the, and I'm always emphasizing one thing leads to another. If you go to an open mic and you're reading your poetry, there's other poets there. There are people who facilitate poetry, read, poetry readings and they will invite you to um, be a part of their event. And so that way you're learning about things by being involved, you know? Yeah, it's um, it's it's that normal thing in life where once you get involved, um, involvement leads to more involvement. Yes. Yeah, but you got to get out there and just dive in, you know what I mean? Yeah. You are and so it's brave. scary, you know, it's scary at first, you know, and you just keep going, you know? Wow. And for me, it, it was not as scary as singing on stage so you know to get up and read on stage is easier than performing on stage you know what I mean? do you still do any of that any singing at all no not as much you know just around the house now but I, I love music I'm a I'm a big music music lover I love music mm-hmm. uh, so you also do photography yeah now, and what that's... what got you into that <laughs> when I was going to the readings I um started taking pictures. I wanted to make sure that there was pictures of of my events. So, you know, some of my friends would take pictures, but I wanted to make sure that there were pictures. And so I started taking pictures of my friends and I had this little camera. I'm going to show you my little camera. Oh, yeah. It's so cute. This was what I started with. 
Isn't oh, okay. A, what is that? I can't cannon. tell what kind. It's a little um, Canon snappy oh. yeah, power shot. And I, I got that a long time ago. See, I'm, I just dive in, you know. So since I was taking that and I started taking pictures of my friends, then I became interested and taking, because it's so small, I can carry it with me all the time. I started taking pictures of, you know, the clouds and, and um, flowers and this and that, anything. And like, I'd have it in my car. If I was stopped at the light, I would start taking pictures of things, you know. Okay. And so then, of course, once you're doing that, your interest in it grows. So I started, I'm very interested in macro photography, which is um, taking pictures of things that are small and making them look big. So I got a, oh. a nicer, a nicer camera. Um, the macro photography is what this is. What this is. I don't know if you can see. Oh it. wow, it's yeah. a big bug. It's a spider. It's okay, a spider. and it's yeah, called also, macro. Macro photography. Ma macro, M A C R O. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and um, you said it's it's uh what did you say also about it? It's laser, not laser. What is the word you just said? I know what you do is you take the camera and you're you're zooming in to capture it like it might be something small, but you capture it so you can really see the detail of it. Okay. And I'm very fascinated with that. Like I have all different pictures of the butterfly, which you might have seen on my uh, Fine Art America. Yes, page. I did. Yeah. And flowers. You know, I I like getting in close, you know, pictures of um, uh, water drops or, or anything oh. like that, just to make it look look really interesting. I, I wanted to do that because it was, for me, more interesting and challenging, to, you yeah. know. Yeah, I have um, experimental photography where I'll take pictures of, um, you might see that one too. It's a picture of, of heat and, you know. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, ripples of water. <laughs> yeah, the one that is, that's a picture of heat is called um, Milky Dream. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's, it's really um, beautiful. I don't have the picture right now, but yeah, it's on Fine Art America. Um, it's called Milky Dream. And the interesting thing about Milky Dream, it the heat formed to look like a face almost, but also heat around it. And people think that I'm uh, Photoshop. I don't know Photoshop, but <laughs> I, that I captured that. Like, it's all real. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you even name each one. Oh yeah, and they I have That's a name. That's creative for them. too. Yeah, and some of them are named the same thing as my poems. You know, which is oh, really fun. Yeah. I, or or I will. It can go either way. I can have a picture and then name the picture and then write a poem or I can have a poem and then take a picture and say that picture, that poem matches this picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's endless. The fun you can have, you know, you, you have the best creative brain ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I, my um, motto is, you know, joy is simple. You know, it seriously uh -huh. is. You know, there's so much fun you can have with things, you know. And I love how you tie everything together. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a work in progress. I'm always looking at new ways to tie things and new ways to learn, you know. But yeah, I love You're not um, someone who sits around and says, I'm bored. No, no. Boredom <laughs> has to do with you because, you know, as long as you have your imagination, there's no option for boredom if you yeah. just keep um, using your imagination, you can write, you can um, try new dance steps, you know, you can take a new class in something. Because once I got into photography, of course, I took um, some classes because I wanted to know how to do the manual settings and, you know, work with the lighting to get it the best I could get it, you know. Yeah. And then playing, my, my fun thing is playing with depth perception, where I'll make some part of it blur and some part of it clear and then other parts of the blur. I, I'm really having fun with that, you know. <laughs> That's so great. Did you take um, classes in person or online or both? There were, yeah, both online and in person. I was taking an in-person class um, just as COVID hit. And mm. So um, we had to end that class. And then I took another class that was, you know, online, you know. But, wow. you know, it's ongoing. Um, I learned from, from everything. I'll look around and you can learn from your friends, you know, because I have friends on, on Fine Art America who were really, really wonderful photographers that have been doing this for years. 
And, um, you know, they give me feedback and tips. They even put it underneath of my pictures on there, which is really cool, you know. Yeah, so it's it's fun to just keep letting one thing lead to another. Yeah, and before you were talking um, about taking life lightly, mm -hmm. what, yeah. can you taking explain that? Oh, taking light lively, life lightly has <laughs> to do with, um, all of us are doing things, you make mistakes. And there's that forgiveness process of you have to forgive yourself and just laugh at yourself. You know what I mean? Because, um, you know, you can get stuck if I'm not, I don't believe in perfectionism. I believe in uh, reaching for excellence. I don't think that perfectionist, that being, perf being perfect ever applies to a human. You know, so yeah. if you realize that being perfect doesn't apply to you, you know, you just say, well, I did my very best and I reached for excellence, but it does not have to be perfect because wanting it to be perfect will stress you. Yes. You know? yeah. It does keep you it, stuck. It takes, it takes the fun out of it too. And so if you can just laugh at yourself, you know, um, when you do something wrong, think about it like this. When sometimes when an event happens, you say um, in five years, you would probably be laughing at what at that. So go ahead and start to laugh at it right now because it's funny right now. You know what I mean? Say that. You know something or that's so you know, funny. You'll do something wrong, you know. And of course, believe me, I'm I'm a work in progress. Um, I'm saying this, but every day I have to remind myself to be this, <laughs> try to be this way more because I'm always trying to work on my outlook, my tendency to be stubborn about certain things, and I have to say to myself. Beverly, you're being stubborn. You know what I mean? Don't do that because if you know your own tendencies then you can be your own antidote, yeah. but you have to be honest with yourself about your own tendencies. You know, I know you I have to have an awareness. Right. Exactly. So yeah. that you know how to get around your own tendencies. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I've talked a lot about focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. Right. And I'm also a big believer in the power of language and that our mm -hmm. words carry energy and it can inspire and empower us. Can you talk about this too? Yes, I am an avid believer that we do have to focus on what we want. You know how um, there are organizations that have these um, uh, banners that say so-and-so against this, or let's say, this one against that. I yes. always think it would be more beneficial if they would just make their banner say so and so for yes. and then what they're trying to accomplish. Because um if we know that what you resist persists. Yes, we do. You know, so if you're whatever you're spewing about, like even when you're showing things and you're saying, I don't like this, look at this thing, I don't like this you're actually growing it because you're you're spreading the detail of what you actually don't want. Yes. Yeah. And I have a poem that's in an anthology and I have it here and I was going to share it. The poem oh, yes, please. Um, the book is called Flowers Blooming from Scars. Okay. And it's an anthology that was put out by the um, Korean Literature Society of America. And the poem that's in there is called Four. F-O-R. <laughs> okay. Now, it goes like this. When paused in a moment of quiet, I muse how neatly this day has filed itself among the others. How the ground we walk upon remains neutral as mankind conjures the next reason to be distracted from who we really are, a human race. The nightmare of imaginary separation stands to undermine what we share. We are spirit and soft tissue with bones and a beating heart. We are all of red blood and a smile that turns upward in the corners. The light from our eyes is the same temperature. We each grow our garden from the seed of our beliefs. So we question those who attack perfect strangers. Why do they hate themselves? We know that misery searches for a direction to point itself. And as we dream solutions, we remember that hope is the greatest candle we can light. 
We remember that what we resist persists and proclaim that we are for honor and connectedness. We are for brotherhood and unity. We are for safety, balance, and respect in all communities. We hold hands and press together the lifelines in the center of our palm. No matter where you are on the planet, tears are still wet, and dinner probably tastes like chicken. <laughs> what an ending line. <laughs> You know, a lot of my poems in my books are, um, some of them are romantic, but some of them are just funny. You know, um, some of them are just observations of life, you know, like um, my first book was called Quiet Observations. Okay. And, can you read just, something from there too? Oh yeah, I can read you some. I okay. Let me see, what can I read from here? I was going to read you Puppy, but Puppy is sad, and I don't want to focus on sadness. Okay. Read a um, funny so I'll, one. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll, I'll read you the one that's called uh, By Chance. Okay. Just as sure as water makes its way down a stream, what we call will come into our hands. Our actions draw so many things to us, yet we think it's coming by chance. We watch the result of someone's hard work and say they had good luck when we speak. We call it bad luck when we live drama drawn by the company we keep. Like attracts like, it's birds of a feather. What we focus on becomes our stance. Like a magnet, we attract with word, thought, and deed. It does not come to us by chance. I love it. So true, right? Yeah. I do have a funny one. Um, Let's hear it. Okay. This is um, from the Peking Cat 40 anthology. I hope you can see And are these all your books? This one is a publication that was published in England, but they used one of my photos on their cover. I see. Okay. You know, love which that. I was very happy because it's my first time being on the cover of a photo of a publication and it was in England. <laughs> oh. Now this poem is kind of funny. It was just all for fun. And it's called Oh Dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. It says Oh dear. My feet have hiccups, she said. I was not sure I wanted to hold a vision of that. I didn't want to contemplate what feet could choke or reflux on. Oh well. Wait a minute. Where would the stomach of a foot be located? There I was, thinking about it. I tried not to. She was not seated in my direct line of vision. So my imagination went wild. It ran like a three-year-old liquored up on candy. I grew a tuba nose cartoon version of hands that could cough. Fingertips with eyeballs, a tiny eared humpback drooler. Suddenly, she got up and walked past me to relieve the cramps in her feet. Why didn't she just say, I have cramps in my feet? <laughs> <laughs> what a picture you paint. <laughs> and see, that one's short. It's not 32 lines, but. Um, I wasn't it's counting. For it's fun. Okay. Yeah, it's for fun. Exactly. So yeah. that really happened. Did that really happen? Yes, that really happened. And where and I, were you when that happened? I was um I think it was in an airport. And you know how the chairs can be sit seated in different directions? Yes. You know, and so then when she said that, I was like, her her he her feet had hiccups. That's hilarious that somebody And then said that. my own imagination took over. And I started thinking, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love that. I'm, I'm such a kid. I'm, I'm a kid at heart. Seriously. I am too. Yeah. And I, I don't want that to ever end my entire life. I want to keep being a kid. <laughs> yeah. And you'll live longer too. Yes. Longevity, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, in, in Mud and Magic, I have more ones that are funny where I'm just, I'm talking from the perspective of a birthday balloon, like I'm the birthday balloon. Um, I'm talking. Oh, about, that's that's great. That is so funny. It's such a fun one. And, oh, um, I love that idea. Yeah, I I have one also where I'm talking from the perspective of being a ladybug, like the ladybug is a. I, I'm let me read you. Okay. 
they have ones that are interesting and uplifting poems, but let me let me find. Uh, let me see which one it was. I can it's, see being from called, the perspective of a ladybug with people okay. walking by, almost Ladies. stepping on you. Yeah. Okay, this one is called Petal Gossip. And she's like um, the newscaster in the flower bed. Yeah, in the flower pollen. bed. Okay. Yeah, in the flower bed. She says, <laughs> Petal, um, pollen is all the rage as buds awaken and wings flutter. There have been shocking reports of a band of snails sneaking like pirates and unruly dandelions screaming that they are yellow too openly at the sun. Our sources tell us, Red is the new red, pink has paled in comparison, and some leaves have curled green with envy. This is Lana Ladybug here, reporting from live from the edge of the, of the flower bed. Stay tuned for more of Life Among Roses. <laughs> wow. All I can say is, wow, you have an amazing brain that can come up with this. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I invite everybody to be um, as just to be as fun as they can be in the moment, you know, because you can take joy in, in anything in the moment, you know, looking at flowers and looking. If you notice nature, that's another hashtag I use a lot. If you notice nature, you get a lot of fun out of nature, noticing hummingbirds, you know, yes. noticing. I like watching bees. You know, realizing that bees are not trying to sting you a lot of times. You can get really close to a bee when you're taking a picture of it because it's so busy working. You know what I mean? And, you know, they, they've got work to do. They're not thinking about you. They don't want to sting you. So you unless just they, notice, unless you notice they, everything yeah, around you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I also know that you're a fan of trying new things, even if it's scary and uncomfortable. Yeah. Can you talk about this? Because many of us are like this. Yeah. You know, me personally, I um, I used to be very shy as a child and I was introverted. So um, I realized that if I was going to grow, I, I wanted to be a singer for a long time, but I was too afraid to get on stage. And then um, the first time I ever got on stage and I was in a contest and I won with my sister. We used to sing together. So that was great encouragement, you know. And But for a long time, I just couldn't even get myself to do it. Yeah. So I realized that there's a process where you have to keep trying to break through your fear, no matter what it is. I had a, because I had a, uh, a mishap when I was a child where I was riding my bicycle in the street, um, I ran into a bread truck. <laughs> oh, now they stopped, they um, they hit their brakes, but I kept going. And so I rammed into it and I hurt my knee. And, and the aftermath of that was that I became afraid to drive. So I didn't learn how to drive until I was like 19 years old, you know, but I, I had this inordinate fear. And so I realized that fear is just a feeling and even it's not a signal not to do something. You know, so having to get through that, I said, OK, what I'm going to do is make a friend of fear, real, realize fear is actually excitement. You know, so if you say it's excitement, you will be able to push through it yes. and you just keep going. Yeah, because you can have incidents in your childhood that cause you to form beliefs that's yes. not true. You know, you just have those beliefs and you're carrying them in their 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 directing your choices deep into your adulthood. And you say, I formed that fear belief as a kid, you know? And so you got to, in your, in your, I always call it my powwow with myself. I have to say, where did you get that belief? You know, and I, then try to work it out. Cause you know, we're always trying to work on ourselves. You know, we you, are yeah. <laughs> every yeah. single day. Like you said, work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when oh. things happen to you, they can become a phobia. And, you're, yes. and it's it's a quiet thing in the background. You're not aware that this is just a phobia that's not real. You know what I mean? I kind of have that when I have to drive out of the area mm -hmm. um, because I, I worked from home for a long time. The company I was at wanted me to work from home full time. I did not want to, but mm -hmm. I started working from home full time. First, it was part time. It was fantastic. Then it was full time. 
And then I got so used to being home mm -hmm. that I started having this fear about going out. And now there's so much more traffic. Yeah. And so it's really hard to go out. That's my biggest fear is driving out of the area or getting anxious when I yeah. do. And you know, this, this is the thing is that what you can start out with something happening to you. This is what I've learned um, through reading books. You know, <laughs> yeah. is that something can happen to you and you can, the fear that comes out is something else. It, your phobia is another area. It's not the thing that happened to you. You know what I mean? Um, like I, I had a fear of dogs. I, I worked myself through that by just making myself pass dogs when people are walking their dog, you know, don't be too afraid over it. You know what I mean? I have a, a phobia of driving in hills, in the hills, you know? So yeah, the, you always have things. That's the reason why I say you, you have works and you're a work in progress, but I have to just keep saying to myself, there's nothing really to be afraid of, but right, you know, I know. it's still hard at in the moment. It you is know? very hard. Mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. had some kind of, when I was driving to work, I had um, some kind of an inner ear in, infection and I was mm. driving by myself and I got really dizzy on the road oh, and it happened that's... a couple of times. And I, that also did something to me. So yeah. I'm hoping one day I can actually go out there and get over it. Yeah, I do yeah. drive and I do drive, you know, within like 20 minutes, but I don't want to go past it. And plus right, there's right. just drivers out there that are, going way too fast now and passing me really fast and yeah uh, and you know what I what I keep saying to myself is that um I have to keep trusting myself because there's always going to be um other people doing whatever but yes. if I I believe that I can manage that that that's my issue you know what I mean because that was my thing with driving I was afraid because I froze when when the I was on my bike as a child Yes. I didn't hit the break. And then, and once I was adult, I was like, I was afraid of freezing again. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's just trusting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now you know my dad um, used to say, it's not that, and you might've heard this before because I've heard other people say this. It's not that the bird trusts the branch it's on. It trusts its wings. Oh, no, I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they'll be on a very thin branch. But they're not saying, well, the branch has me. They're, what they're thinking is their wings have me. I love it. You paint such a picture with everything you talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So how did you get through going on stage? That's what I want to know as a singer. Well, you know what? Um, rehearsing. If you really rehearse what your performance is going to be, then you trust that you're once you're out there, you're just going to do your performance and you're going to do it very well. So I, and when I was a singer, I used to over rehearse, you know what I mean? With yeah. me and my sister, um, before we won in town in America, we even rented a, a small studio to practice everything that we were going to do to make sure that we had it down. So it was a big crowd. It was in New York. And, um, but, you know, I, we could step out there and feel like, yay, we got it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but but when you're practicing, there's no audience, right? No, there's and no audience. And all of a sudden, there's thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you the confidence comes because you really have rehearsed and you know, you know your performance. So it, it helps you get through the nervousness. Yeah. You know? And then, and, and this is the thing too, once you do things, you can do things in increment steps. The Talent America wasn't my first time um, performing. We had one, um, a small regional um, one. The, the one I won in Talent America was after I won it with a small, you know okay. what I mean? Um, and then I had done background singing and sang with bands. If you do things in small increment steps, it's like taking small bites, you know what I mean? Yeah. Baby so, steps. Um, yeah. Take your baby steps and just say, I'm going to do the next step. And then if you do that next step, you would say, now what's the next step? And if you just break it down and not think that it's a, a going to be a quantum leap or anything, you right. can imagine yourself doing just the next step. You know what I mean? And so that, that breaks down the wall of fear. And then after a while, you're looking back and saying, wow, look at how far I've come, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 Do you ever do any meditation or anything like that? You know, I'm 
I'm not the best at meditation, but I do um, listen to, I guess you could call it meditation, listen to music quietly. Um, uh, I'll listen to music when I'm sleeping. Sometimes I have favorite songs like slow songs that I'll listen to while I'm, that I fall asleep to, or I have funny movies that I'll play and I fall asleep to a funny movie. You know, I tend not to watch the news because the news um, can make you anxious because yes. it, it, it's feeding you a lot of drama and it, it doesn't, for, for me, it doesn't help you to feel hopeful in your day. You know what I mean? So I try to keep my focus on things that are going to make me feel hopeful because then you have the energy to try to do this, to try that. But if you, it can, you don't want to look at anything that adds to a sense of depression you know, or feeds your anxiety, actually, because I mean, there's so much in the world that <laughs> has yeah. anxiety right now. Yeah, agreed. We yeah. when we go to bed, we watch comedies like um, reruns of King of Queens or Everybody Loves Raymond or Friends. Yeah. Yes, uh, they're, they're yeah. great. Or mom. Mom is hilarious, too. And we just we're, sometimes we're laughing our heads off. And then five minutes later, we're asleep. Yeah. But we won't watch the news or anything. No. Yeah. Violent yeah, or anything I, like that before bed. Yes. Um, funny movies are a great thing to fall asleep to. I have an old movie that's one of my favorite. It's called Cold Comfort Farm. Now, oh. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's it's based. it was based in England. It came out a long time ago. Um, I've, I've watched that movie so many times. It's really, really funny. But if you look it up, you'll okay. you'll um you'll know you'll see it there's clips of it um that are really really funny now what i'm finding funny is um uh, no i don't want to give it away i don't want to give it away it's just <laughs> really really funny um oh my god there's so many movies that are funny that i love you know yeah and also others, others that you would recommend oh my god let me see um, I like Bend It Like Beckham. I don't know if you've ever heard of that movie. Uh, yes, I think I did see that. That's an old movie too. Ago. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a really good movie. I love the music in there. You know, okay. uh, oh my is that god, a football. Movie? I, what say it again? Is that about football? Yes, it is. Okay, I uh -huh. know we saw it, but it's been a very long time. And if you haven't seen um this one, Sing Two is really, really good. That came out like two years ago, I would say. Um, it's it's a cartoon. I like cartoons. I was going to say, is it animated? Yeah, I seem but to the, the music in there is so wonderful. And um, the story is uplifting. It's, oh my God, I could I could send you a list, Kim. I could, <laughs> movies. <laughs> okay. Movies to laugh at, you know. Do yeah. that and I'll record it in the show notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh you want to make everybody feel joyful. Mm -hmm. Go to yeah. sleep laughing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if they're either that or take your favorite music, um, something usually slow or jazzy, if you like jazz, um, and put that on too, because it gives your mind something to think about or or it gives your body that sense of relaxation. You know. Yeah, I usually put on my Calm app in the morning mm -hmm. on my computer when I get up and it's got... I don't know if you're on it, but it's got background sounds mm -hmm. and you can play that while you play a meditation because otherwise the meditations have no sounds. It's just blank, nothing. Okay. So I, sometimes I don't even do the meditations. I just listen to the background music and there's ocean, there's music with ocean, there's uh -huh. birds. It's got about 40 or 50 things to choose from. And I just put it on while I'm working and it's very calming and relaxing. It'd probably be good to go to bed or go to sleep too. Now, do you like to do meditations where it's just you calmly thinking and quiet and you're like focusing on the sound, on the sounds, uh, like um, sounds of birds or whatever, and you're just thinking to yourself? Do you like to do those type of meditations? Yeah, sometimes I like to do non-guided meditations right. where it's just, you know, nature or ocean in the background. And sometimes I'll hold like a piece of amethyst Mm -hmm. And then I'll meditate on something I've been thinking about to try to maybe get an answer. Mm -hmm. um, other times I listen to the calm meditation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 10 minutes every day and yeah. it's guided. So they're talking about your breathing. And then mm -hmm. she has a little piece of wisdom at the end that yeah. you listen to. And 
that seems to work. It's only 10 minutes. And I, I think anybody could do 10 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, but it's I'm, hard because my mind wanders all over the place, which is common. It's very right. Common. Right. Yeah. That's the thing is I'm trying to get better at the one where I completely clear my mind so that I'm not hearing anything. I'm just hearing my inner voice, I guess would say. Yeah. And, and to just not hear anything, but just like hear the sound of, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better at that one. And and you can focus on something that you're trying mm-hmm. to get an answer to. Yeah. 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 And so that works for me. And also lo- not long ago, I did this, one of the um, meetups for writing, but this one was called a, what was it called? Journaling and meditate. Okay. Right? journaling and meditation. I don't know what it was called, but I do this now. So you journal for maybe five minutes Mm -hmm. and then you meditate on what you just journal. Oh, okay. So that's pretty cool too. So you get, you know, they say journaling, they say journaling is like meditation. So that's, that really is. Yeah. And I like, I like writing um, things out by hand, you know, and sometimes the pieces that I write come from things that I've just written, you know, how, like I, I would, may have shared with you guys um, in our writing group where I'll write things out and then I'll underline lines that stand out to me. And sometimes those can turn into a poem that I rework, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's it's so much content out there for you. Things either you wrote or things that you, you just get from yes. other sources that you oh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's so much to be inspired by, you know, there and, is. You know, and I wanted to show you too, um, some of my pictures, of course, the pictures you've seen them on Fine Art America. Yeah. You have a lot of merchandise. Yeah. Here. Isn't that nice? That's actually a pillow. Cause you know, they can get them on canvas, but. Oh, that's, that's a, a pillow. pillow. Oh, yeah, a pillow. wow. That, is that a dragonfly? It's a blue dragonfly. Oh, uh, wow. What a cool pillow. Yeah. I, I, I was so glad with how they turned out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, do you have one with a bee on it too? Yeah, I I don't I'm I'm so into my dragonflies that I've got the samples of the dragonflies. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, That's that the is really flower pretty. with the blue dragonfly. Yeah. Wow, I but, love that. Yeah. And I like that the images are on both sides, you know. But um, yeah. I don't have the samples of the bees, but I do have a lot of bees on there too. I, I do love catching bees. They're interesting. Yeah. And spiders, think- spiders are born, you know, knowing uh, geometry, you know what I mean? So I, I love, you know, capturing spiders. <laughs> yeah. And also back to the dragonfly, doesn't that symbolize something? I took a picture of one not too long ago that was on my deck. I got really close and I took a picture Oh, I don't good. know where the picture went. I didn't do anything with it, but um, doesn't it mean that somebody transformation has come to visit you or yeah. something like that? If you see a lot of them, it's supposed to be a sign of transformation, probably for you. You know, yeah. Oh. But I I go and seek out my dragonflies. I know the season that they're gonna oh. be near the water. You know what I mean? Wherever there's water, that you know, dragonflies usually when you see them in that form. The, the the beautiful form with the with the wings that's their last part of their life you know because they have been in water um evolving oh really that. yeah for usually like over a year or, or sometimes two years you know they have several incarnations and then when they crawl out of the water and they push their wings out and that's their last incarnation it's only for like a month Oh, that's so, that's kind of sad. That well, that that's their time to, um, you know, that's their their time to mate and you know do their thing, you know, yeah. Wow. So, do you go to the water and just sit there and wait with your camera? You know what? If you um, go to areas where it's usually in the spring and during the summer, if you go where there's um, any like ponds. Uh-huh. Or, or in, in your area, you will see dragonflies near it because they usually will mate near it. And then they um, put their their babies or their eggs in the water right there for them to start their process of, you know, being. And I, I think they're fascinating. My my um, favorite ones are the red, but I, I only have the pillows of the blue. But I didn't the know they came ones, in, the, in different colors. Oh my, they're in all different colors. Really? Yeah. And all different all different designs on them. You know what I mean? 
And um, yeah, the red ones are harder to capture because I've just watched their behavior. They tend to not land for very long, you know, and they take off and then they're running off. The blue ones are easier to get because they, they land and they tend to hold still longer, you know, and the blue dasher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a name for it? Yeah, the blue dasher dragonfly. There's all different names for them because um, different parts of the world have different types of dragonflies for what I understand. You yeah. are a dragonfly expert. <laughs> this is your no, new I'm just career. Fascinated with them. They're so beautiful, you know. And this was a funny thing. I would be taking pictures of them and I'll be saying, hold still, hold still, hold still. And it seems to me like holding still. And then I'm saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, so you are the dragonfly whisperer. Oh, I hope I hope to become that. Yes. You, you know how to communicate with them to where they listen. That's hilarious. Yeah, and I do that with butterflies too. I would say, Oh, thank you. Thank you for holding still. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted you, can you talk a little more about your books? Oh, okay. Um and what they're called my, and my first book is called Quiet Observations. I'll show you one. Quiet Observations. Is that the Diary. whole title or is there a subtitle? Yeah, it's called Diary, Quiet Observations, Diary Thought, Whimsy, and Rhyme. And okay. I did that um, in 2006. It's been out for a while. Um, and what I did was like a concept book. You know, I, it was just the thoughts and observations of life that I had seen at the time. And what I did was had um, um, an artist do drawings to go along with the the. Um, with the poems. And at the time I told him what I wanted him to draw. So, and, and he drew them, you know, and the cover of my book was done by Brees Mollie, which is works for Disney. He's a wonderful animator. You know, I love that cover. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and he, drew you? Exactly, he, no, he drew exactly what I asked. I wanted it to be like the person was observing, but their mouth was a zipper. Okay. I can quiet. see that. Now. Yeah. They were, they were quiet and it was observing. And he did a beautiful job. Yes. And, um, now my other book, what did I just do? I just had it a second ago. Mud and magic. Oh, here it goes. This one is called Mud and Magic. And now what is Mud and Magic about? Mud and Magic. The and, why, and why? how did you come up with that title? I came up with that title because of sometimes things will happen and you're thinking that this thing that happened is bad when actually it's making you do something new or it's giving you an opportunity to get stronger, you know? So that's why I called it mud and magic. You think it's mud, but it's actually magic. It's so is it kind of finding the gift and everything? Finding the gift and everything. Yes, that's a great way to, to summarize it. And it and it has the poems in here are, you know, like I read Petal Gossip to you. Um, you know, their observations, but also me talking more about romance and and um just observations in life, you know. Oh my gosh. I could I could read you another one. Okay. Oh, there's one in here that is one of my favorites, and it has to do with, I, I read this one a lot at my readings, so I'll share that one. It's called Next. From the tip top of January to the bottom of every December, life is a continuum. May we remember to remember. There are no platforms on which we halt, no arrivals at which we are landing. There is only continuous movement, blend motion into all planning. Next is a good four letter word that dances on the tongue and illuminates the playgrounds of our minds. Next can call loudly or soft and subtle when it chimes. Within the cold of winter, remember next are fragrant flowers of spring. Next reminds us there is no be all or no end all to anything. When riding a high tide, or if low tide has you feeling sadness or perplexed, no true muscle can be found and how well we just say next. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like so we have, yeah, well, thank you. We have um, uh, all sorts of fun with that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm going to include links to your books in the show. Okay. Notes. 
And they, yeah, they are available on, on Amazon, both of them, you know. Okay. Yeah. And where can people find you? They can find me um, on mostly on Facebook, okay. um, which I think I sent you the link for that. Um, yes, I will include them, but where yes. I don't have it in front of me, where can they find you? Where can you tell me what the name of the Facebook? Oh, well, if they if they go on and they look for Beverly M. Collins now. Beverly M. Me. Collins now. Yes. Okay. That's and on, on Instagram, I'm um, at Beverly M. Collins artist. They okay. can find me there. And Twitter, um, I think it's just Beverly M. Collins, you know. Yes. Okay. And um um also um Beverly, my my pixels is Beverly M dash Collins dot pixels dot com. That's where they can look at all my photos. I uh, have oh my god, over two hundred and thirty, I believe, photos on there. And and you can get them on all sorts of products, which is fun. You know. Yeah, you have a lot of merchandise. Yeah, you have yeah. Pillows. What else do you have in there? Cups. Um, you can get those. The the images that you see there can be on cups. They can be on throw pillows, uh, duvet covers, um, t shirts like what I'm having on now. Um, oh gosh, uh, shower curtains even. You know? Oh my goodness! Yeah. You can get them on tote bags. You know. Okay. Yeah, even stickers. You can get posters too, and of course, canvas prints. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, go check out Beverly's merchandise out there. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, if they Google Beverly M. Collins, they'll they'll see me on the web. They can read some of my poems are actually yes. um, published online. You know, which is fun. You can because I'm published in all different places in the world, and you can see them. You know? Oh my goodness, you do yeah. so much. Yeah, what a, what a great I want to add more to that even. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything I didn't ask you today that you would like to mention, talk about, leave us with today? Um, just the importance of being careful of what you share. Um, I think I, I shared with you when when I was a teenager, of course, I, I'm human. I go through my depression and I had attempted suicide and I made the mistake of sharing what I did while I was in the hospital and one of my friends were visiting me. I shared that information of what I did. And instead of her being shocked or appalled, she was young, too. She went and tried to do the same thing oh. using what I gave her as a model for me. So, so when I'm looking at people out in the world, and I've said this before, um, that are sharing the details of tragedies, you have to realize those are teaching moments for people who may not need that information. You know what I mean? Right. And that, I learned that then, you know, be careful what you share. Don't, don't share the details of sad things because you're spreading the sadness. I, I didn't know that then because I was a kid, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've come so far since then. Yeah. And, you know, you never stop being challenged in life and you have, and you just have to, you always have your moments where you have to bounce back from things. Everybody, absolutely everybody, even if you're doing very well, you still have moments and you have to bounce back from them. Yeah. every one of us. Yeah. Did you become creative after this happened? Well, I was creative before? before that happened, but I didn't have a strong belief in myself. And that was a part of my sadness. That was a part of me being um, very, um, uh, I'm a loner. You know, I don't mind being alone, but I was sad and alone. You know I what see. I mean? Yeah. And, you know, you have to get out of it one by one. You know. Yeah. One moment at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on Focus Your Time. I thank really you for having it. me, Kim. Thank you. Yeah, that was so fun. I don't know if I mentioned it to the audience, but we're in a writing group together online. Yes. And we meet once or twice a week, and it's so fun. And you're so inspiring and encouraging every time I talk to you. That's why I wanted you to come on the show so you can cool. share it with the rest of the world. So thank yeah. you for coming on. I and thank it. you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great takeaway from anything that I said. Yeah. And, and make comments. Make sure that you send Kim comments that if you like it. Okay.
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you get back to it. And I guess I will see you soon in our writing group. Yes. Thanks again, Kim. And thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye.